A new study shows one in three former NFL players surveyed believe they have CTE. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy causes the death of nerve cells in the brain and is believed to be associated with repeated head injuries. The study published in JAMA Neurology found 25% of players who believe they have CTE also say they've experienced suicidal thoughts. The news comes as Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa was just diagnosed with his third concussion of his professional career. Chris Nowinski is co-founder and CEO of the Concussion Legacy Foundation and serves on the NFL Players Association Health and Safety Committee. And he joins me now with more on this. Chris, thanks so much for coming on. It's an interesting one because CTE can only be diagnosed through an autopsy after death. So there's no way to know if you have it. But how concerning is it to hear one third of these players think they have it? It's not that concerning. I mean, when you think about the brain bank studies done on more than 400 NFL players, at least 10% of NFL players have this, and it may be as high as 90%. And reality is we don't know where it lies in between. So for a third to think they have it is actually uh, not a surprise at all because that may be accurate. But we don't know if it's this third who think they have it that actually have it. That's an important point. If I understand you correctly, are you saying it's not that concerning because this number's lower than you think the reality is? Well, I'm saying it's not It's not surprising. It is concerning. I mean, what's happening to NFL players is absolutely concerning. The idea that so many of them are being diagnosed with CTE and that almost 92% of nearly 400 that have been studied have had it is deeply concerning. It is a neurodegenerative disease. It causes problems with cog cognition. It's associated with developing dementia. There's also an association, although more mild, with psychiatric symptoms. So this is a very serious disease that these players are getting while they're playing that slowly manifests and changes and progresses over time. So it's important we study this and we also understand the link with suicide, which right now we don't know. Uh, interestingly, NFL players have a lower risk of suicide than the population. So this study highlighting that many are, have had thoughts of suicide has not led to an increase in suicide for the 15 years that we've been talking about suicide. The, the big takeaway from this study is, and, and the lesson from this study, is that NFL players who are concerned about CTE do need to get help and get treatment. The symptoms that they're having today may be treatable. A lot of the problems with cognition could be caused by, for example, sleep apnea issues or uh, pain intolerance issues. Um, there's all sorts of other possible treatable causes. So we are constantly messaging to former NFL players and former football players, if you're concerned, we can't tell you whether or not you have the disease, but we can tell you a good doctor can help you live better while we try to figure out better ways to diagnosis and living people and to treat it. And let's also talk prevention because players have the option of wearing guardian caps, which fit over the helmet and offer some added protection against concussion. Do you think the NFL should mandate their use? Uh, no, I don't think the NFL should yet mandate their use. There has not been a published study yet on the guardian caps that NFL players are wearing. They're a different type of cap than is being sold at colleges and high schools. So without any published data and only two years of use, uh, there's no way we should be mandating something that adds nearly a pound of weight to the helmet and can actually cause other problems. Um, the, the reality is, you know, another way to look at this study is the idea that the stress of being concerned about CTE is real, right? Like, so I'm somebody who played college football. I'm concerned about CT as well. And so knowing that in your 20s you did something or your teens that can affect the rest of your life is something that we should be trying much harder to prevent, not just at the NFL level, but all levels of football. Uh, so what else do you want to see the NFL do here? Well, you know, if the reality is the NFL is making some really great changes. I like the new kickoff. I like the guard, you know, the, the idea that we need to do better with helmets. But the other point that needs to be made is changing the last few years of a football player's 15 to 20 year career, making them safer, is not necessarily going to change CT outcomes 10, 20, 30 years down the road. If the commitment to safety that the NFL is making is not pushed down all the way through football, we're just going to continue to have this problem never be solved. The two biggest changes that need to happen throughout the football ecosystem is kids probably should not be tackling young and getting hundreds of hits to the head while their brain's developing. So probably no tackle until 12 or 14. And then we should not be hitting in practice. We still have in college football two out of every three head impacts happening in practice, which is crazy now that we know what these head impacts do. 
The NFL is not taking a position in, uh, on youth football. In fact, they're still recruiting children to youth tackle football. So they, if they continue to do that, we'll continue to have this problem. Wow, two out of three head hits happen in practice. That's an interesting fact. Co-founder, CEO of the Concussion Legacy Foundation, Chris Nowinski. Chris, thank you. Thank you.